In this video, we will look at measurement of the charge of an electron. Um, this is Millikan's uh, well-known oil drop experiment. And um, if indeed, of course, we know the charge to mass ratio of the electron from the cathode ray tube experiment, for example, then if we know the charge via Millikan's experiment, then we can discover um, or measure more accurately the mass of an electron. But for now, let's focus on this uh, Nobel Prize winning experiment, Millikan's oil drop experiment. Here he is, and it was done uh, in 1911. And he won uh, the Nobel Prize in 1923 for measurement of the elementary electric charge, as well as work on the photoelectric effect, which we'll be covering in a later video. So this is the basic apparatus. Uh, we have this kind of chamber here, and uh, oil uh, is sprayed into the top part of the chamber. So we've got a number of, we've got two schematics here. Um, so here's the oil in this container here, and it's uh, sprayed, this is called an atomizer, because it's a very, very fine kind of vapor of oil particles that are sprayed into the top part of that chamber. Again, we've got it here in this schematic as well. We've got that fine oil spray. Um, and the idea is that some, um, some of these oil droplets or oil drops will pass through a hole at the bottom of the chamber. So you can see that here and here. And um, in that region, we have basically a capacitor. We've got um, a pair of electrodes, uh, positively and negatively charged. And what we can do is shine a light into this region and view the oil drops that have landed in this region. So we've got this fine spray up here. Some of them make it into this area here. Now it's important to know, as you can see in this schematic here, that what we want is for these oil drops to acquire uh, a fundamental unit of charge or more units of charge, but basically just effectively one, two, three, four electrons to be attached to them. And that is done by, for example, using x-rays to ionize the air between these uh, cap capacitor plates here. Um, and then we're going to have electrons the, that can be picked up by the oil drops. And then, of course, if you've got an oil drop with a net uh, negative charge, it's going to be drawn upwards towards a positive plate. And um, it will be drawn... Um, so pushed away from the negative plate and drawn towards uh, the positively charged plate if it indeed has electrons attached. So this is a, a summary of the oil drop experiment from 1911 by Robert Millikan. Um, as mentioned, the air um, between those capacitor plates is ionized by x-rays and the oil drops pick up uh, a net charge. Um, and then um, we can switch on the electric field between the capacitor plates and as mentioned, the oil drops are going to experience um, a force of attraction towards the positive plate. And of course, if, that, uh, if, those, if those plates don't have a field across them, then what will happen is the oil drops will just fall downwards due to gravity. And the idea is we're going to use those plates to be able to oppose the force of gravity and even hold one oil drop um, in equilibrium, where we've got the upward force due to the electric field matching the gravitational force. And so that's a key first force balance equation, which we'll see in the coming slides. And then, um, because we need more information, as we'll see in the equations that follow, we can switch off the electric field and let the oil drop, which is in air, remember, reach a terminal uh, velocity. In other words, it will start accelerating due to uh, gravity, and then it's going to hit a measure of air resistance and experience a, a drag force, which we can look at with Stokes' law, um, to then see when it's, when it's at that um, terminal velocity, we know that the drag force is going to match uh, the gravitational force. And we're going to use that second force balance equation to, to in fact, find the radius of the drop, which we're going to need for the first force balance equation in order to find what is the electric charge on the oil drop. Um, I mentioned terminal velocity, and of course we've got that microscope kind of viewing capability for that region. We've got light shining in as well, and so we're going to need to be able to, to measure the velocity, the terminal velocity of an oil drop as it falls between those capacitor plates. 
So this is uh, a view again of that schematic we've already seen. And so what we're focusing on is one oil drop. Of course, if there are many of them, you can kind of uh, manipulate, uh, as mentioned, uh, the electric field here such that it just holds one of the oil drops, let the others drop. So we can focus on just one, but there may be others present. Um, and this video here is going to give an example of what we see when we look in that region there. So we can see here, here's an example of an oil drop being drawn upwards towards the positive plate and then drawn downwards as we either switch off the field or indeed if we were to reverse polarity, there's, there are options there. So there it's drawn up. Um, so initially being drawn up towards the positive plate. And then if we switch off the electric field, then it just free falls and hopefully reaches terminal velocity, um, which we're going to need uh, for information on finding the radius of that oil drop. So we're going to be measuring two key things here, the charge on the drop as well as the radius of the drop. Uh, and in fact, in order to find the charge, we're going to need um, a measurement of the radius of the drop. OK, so let's take a close look now at what's going on exactly. So we've got the, uh, the oil drop here. So we've got, initially, we've got all the oil spray, of course, and we've just got one or a few oil drops that have fallen between the capacitor plates. Here, we're just focusing on one of them. We've got a distance D between the capacitor plates. And what's going to happen is, of course, we've got the downward uh, weight, the gravitational force, which is just mass times the acceleration due to gravity. So this is just Newton's second law, force equals mass times acceleration. And then we know um, that the density of that oil drop is equal to its mass divided by its volume. So that allows us to substitute for the mass here, just writing the volume, assuming it to be a sphere, 4 thirds pi r cubed, where r is the radius of the oil drop. So the volume multiplied by the density of the oil drop. Um, and then, of course, that's multiplied by g. And we know that's the expression for the downwards gravitational force. Um, and then we know that this charge, uh, or rather this oil drop, has picked up a charge. It's picked up um, one, two, three, four electrons, thanks to the ionization of the surrounding air. And so what will happen then is if we've got an electric field uh, applied between those capacitor plates there, then we know the force is just going to be equal to uh, the charge multiplied by the electric field. And here I've just rewritten the field, uh, the electric field as uh, the voltage divided by the distance, you know, volts per meter, that's uh, the electric field. And so what we have then is if we are able to manipulate uh, the voltage such that this oil drop is stationary, suspended between the plates, then we can equate the gravitational force with this uh, electric field force. Okay, and so that's what we're showing here. This is the force due to the electric field. QV divided by D is being equated with the force due to gravity. So 4 thirds pi r cubed times the density times the acceleration due to gravity. Okay, and now there is a little modification that's needed here because uh, this is actually in air, and so there is a kind of an up thrust that we need to compensate for, and so all we do is just subtract off the density of the surrounding air. So that's like a, a minor adjustment to the equation to make it a more accurate measurement. Okay, so this is now the first uh, force balance, okay, and the only unknown here because if you look at this equation, we're trying to find the charge on the oil drop Q because that charge is going to be assumed to be composed of the fundamental unit of charge, one, two, three, four electrons, for example. Um, so we, we're trying to find Q. We know the voltage we applied. We know D, uh, the distance between the plates. Um, we know pi. We know the density of the oil drops. That can easily be measured. Uh, we know the density of air, we know the acceleration due to gravity. So the only unknown, other than Q, is the radius R. Okay? So that's why we're going to have to do another force balance equation to solve for R. So what we're going to do then is switch off um, the electric field, switch off E, allow this oil drop to fall and reach a terminal velocity, because when it's reached a terminal velocity, in other words, it starts accelerating, then it goes so fast that it's then... Um, there's basically a drag force which is going to then match um, the uh, acceleration, uh, the force due to gravity. And then we have um, Stokes' law kicking in 
um, which explains what that drag force is, that frictional force due to the surrounding air, due to the viscosity of the air. Um, so that gives us this second force balance equation. Okay, we're going to equate this kind of air resistance, the drag force, with uh, the gravitational force. So quoting then Stokes' law, this is uh, that uh, frictional um, force due to the viscosity of the air. So the viscosity of the air is given by this term here, eta, multiplied by the terminal velocity, multiplied by the radius of this oil drop, and multiplied by 6 pi. So... You know, we know uh, already what, F, what the, the, the weight is, um, and then so we can equate that expression to this expression where the only unknown um, is, the, is the radius because we can measure uh, the terminal velocity just by tracking a drop, uh, timing it, looking at how long it takes, timing how long it takes and looking at the distance and thereby finding the terminal velocity. In which case, the only unknown in that expression will be the radius r, which we can solve for directly. And then we can plug it into the original expression here to find, at last, what we were looking for, which was the charge on the oil drop. OK, and when it's done, as we'll see in the next slide, the, the, the result that drops out is quite remarkable. We find that all the measured charges are basically integer multiples of a fundamental basic unit. So let's take a look at that on the next slide. These are example results where what we've done is measure the radius of the oil drop um, using Stokes' law as shown before with that force balance with the gravitational force. And then we've then gone on to find the charge using the original force balance equation. So you get this kind of scatter plot of radius along the x-axis. So this is in 10 to the minus 7 meters and then charge, calculated charge, on the y-axis here. And these are the dots showing various oil drop measurements. And so this is where we get this remarkable result then. You'll notice that whilst um, you know, the radii are fairly well distributed, these can take on all kinds of different radii in 10 to the minus 7 uh, meters as the basic unit here. But um, nonetheless, they can take on um, any of a range of uh, radii. But look at what happens with the, elect with the charge of the oil drop. You'll see that it always goes up in these discrete quanta. This is like one quant quant quantum, two, three, four, five. So it always goes up in these key units. You can't kind of get um, a midway charge between um, this first step and the second step. It just goes up in a, in a stepped, discrete fashion. And that's how it was then possible to calculate um, what that distance was, what that unit of charge, the distance on the y-axis, the unit of charge. And it was found to be roughly 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 coulombs, which we know now, of course, to be um, the charge of the electron. In fact, that is what Millikan found. Or I think actually on the next slide we get his... Uh, Quote, yeah, so he was doing remarkably well with pretty basic apparatus way, way back. Um, he, he got a very good value, so he got um, 1.5924 times 10 to the minus 19 coulombs, whereas, of course, the modern value is not quite the same as that. We know it to be 1.6022 times 10 to the minus 19, but look how close he was with such a relatively uh, basic bit of kit there. Um, anyway, so... Um, if you go back to our charge to mass ratio, which we found with the cathode ray tube experiment, if we plug in uh, the, the millikan or the modern value for the charge of an electron, you can then calculate the electron mass. And that's where we get this remarkably small quantity, 9.109 times 10 to the minus 31 kilograms. So over time then, um, people have made measurements of the fundamental unit of charge, that of the electron. Um, so this was, the, I think, the original Millikan value here. And then over time, what happens is we end up settling on this rather precise um, estimate of the charge of an electron. So thanks for listening to that video, this video on the charge of the electron. Where we're going next is to start to explore atomic structure. So we know now there are these subatomic particles, uh, the electrons, 
and we know what their charge is, what their mass is, we know they've come, they can be emitted from uh, atoms. But you know, what is the distribution? What, what, what is the makeup of an atom? How are these subatomic particles, these electrons, distributed within the atom? And that's where Rutherford's famous gold foil scattering experiment uh, will come in to reveal uh, the structure, the basic structure of the atom. Thanks for listening.